No, you are. Except now we're back. Right. Okay. We're back with more matches. <laughs> Going to have Flareidos versus the Queendom deck. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely think it's going to be a bit of a slugfest. Um, each deck can definitely get going pretty quick. The Queendom deck can uh, force the matchup to go a little slower if it needs to, mm -hmm. uh, bringing stuff up off the bench and poisoning it. Yep. But um, as we're told, the Flareidos deck does have scoop-ups to reuse the Flareon burn ability. So if damage gets left in play, it can definitely get removed very easily. Yeah, for sure. So Flareidos, um, I don't know who's going first. But um, it uh, looks looked... like uh, Nick went first. Um, so no supporters. Doesn't look like he had much more going on. But starting with a couple of Pidgeys is not awful. Yep. Um, can definitely um, be useful, especially with Pidgeot. Um, I think if he had Rare Candy Pidgeot, he would have played it. So um... Yeah, just get the quick search <laughs> immediately. Set up your turn two. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, Matt here, um, starting off with a Holland Transceiver for the Holland Mentor, um, about to set up all his basics. Now, um, oh, don't know if I discard the grass, but yeah, it looks like he had two other energies in hand, so it's kind of okay. But also, I, there might have been a better discard for sure. Yeah, there's just um, the older formats like this. Uh, we have cards to recover energy in Pokemon, but it is still a very resource management game in the long run. Mm -hmm. So, for sure. So, um, Matt here is setting up his Spinarax and Eevees. Um, so, pretty much the point of the Flareidos deck is to uh, burn and um, confuse, confuse, I think. It's with... definitely the two status conditions, which is why the... Ariados is the main attacker in this. Yes. So, um, Ariados for one grass energy does 10 plus 30 for each status condition. Yes. On the defending Pokemon. So, once you evolve into Flareon EX, um, that's um, 70 damage base and then 10 more from um, the burn. So. Looks like Matt's also going to call for family for another Spinner Act. Yep. Um, not the worst. I like that. Maybe less after discarding the energy and then putting an energy on the EV, but... Oh no, and Nick just draws and passes. Uh, oh, uh, he probably doesn't need to play that with how slow the game's going just right now. Right. Might as well uh, save it for the other Flareons, right? Oh, he, oh man, he has that... Oh, it's gonna go right for... He had a fire in hand. I might just get aggressive here yeah. with a Flareon. Yeah, I'm not... Well, um, what are Flareon's attacks? Um, I do not remember what the attacks are, <laughs> but I do believe it is a two and a three energy attack. Gotcha. Uh, the three might just be a vanilla 70. Okay. 70 and 10 to itself. Got it, got it. Uh, 30 and reduce 30. Gotcha. Uh, so, yeah, he wouldn't be able to knock out the... He can't retreat. Energy. Oh, Nick cornered, so that means that uh, the Eevee cannot retreat. Um, but if he evolves into the Flareon, yes. he, he then removes that corner static <clears throat> condition. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like he's going to do that. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know... Oh, he top, does he good. top Ooh, deck the Scott? He top decks a Scott. So, not going to get the Plain Ding this turn, but going to get the Search's deck for three supporter cards. Oh, yeah, wow, that is that is good. Mentor, so, an obvious choice here. Of course. Um, definitely just being able to set up your own basics is uh, definitely cool. I, I really like Mentor because it's um, more of a balanced card. It's not like you can search out for three EX Pokemon like you could with Collector yeah, or, or Bridget. Even in, in my, uh, our previous game, the Mentor could search out the Sneasel EXs. But mm -hmm. then again, the, the Sneasel EX is very vulnerable to getting knocked out. Right. As we saw in close to three consecutive turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, again, Nick corners. Um, pretty slow start, but starting next turn, I think he's going to be able to start setting up and just get a solid board. Yeah, um, I'm curious to see if, if Nick's hand is more playable once he gets more basics down on the bench. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Stevens might have been in 
if you're search there because he won't be able to play his hand down as far. Mm, um, the I scientist see. here is a disgusting search. Oh moment. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think Nick uh, has a lot of cards in his hand. I mean, he just got plus two from the Scots, and he didn't really play much from his opening hand. Nope, we're on turn three, Matt's turn four, possibly. <laughs> Man, Jeez. Matt, Matt discards that stump too. Four, you discarded the five, stump in our game, and I was kind of, I wasn't sure about seven. that. Yeah, I mean, I at, at the point in the game, I didn't feel like it was super effective. No, probably not. Um, but but partially it was only because I saw that you uh, discarded the Lunatone, and I was like, I'm pretty sure this only runs a one-one line. So yeah, so <laughs> pro the, probably the best reason to drop it, I wasn't gonna need it. Yeah, but um, Matt does evolve into the Flareon to get out of the static corner ability. Yep. Oh, and there we go. We Knock evolve into Flareon. Um, so, X Yusuke VR, I, um, sorry for not answering the question, but I think Flareon is one of the only ways to get conditions in the active with the Poke Power, correct? Um, I, I believe so. I, I, yeah. I have to believe that if they're at, at the time of these decks being played, if there was even a less better choice, it would still be played. Yeah, cause cause you have the uh, versatility of other of the other evolutions. Yeah, on, as well on an ability on, on a power, uh, I believe no. Um, on attacks, most definitely. There, there were some rather annoying attacks, similar to the Queendom attack, that could bring stuff up off the bench and poison it and affect it with other status status conditions. Yep. So, Nick here getting two Nidoran females and a Hound Dower. Um, could you remind us what the what the Hound Doom did, Jeremy? Um, I want to say I I can't remember the Hound Door. I want to say it's it's an it's a power that affects stadiums. As long as less Pokemon in play, your opponent can't play trainer cards from his or her hand. Oh, oh so it locks supporters goodness. and item cards. Yes. That is nasty. Why was this card not played more? Yeah, seriously. As long as you have less Pokemon in play than I, your opponent, that's in. I yeah, don't, no problem. I don't, I don't remember why this. I mean, obviously why it was played, but uh, Nido Queen definitely wanted to fill their bench up. Right. I think. Um, I think it was a more of a matchup specific one, um, card. But I mean, here if 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 Nick keeps keeps. Uh, his bench low, um, he could stop Matt from using his super scoop ups and stuff. Yeah, and it will definitely limit the amount of times that Matt can affect Nick with status conditions. Which, yeah, for if, sure. if the defending Pokemon on Nick's side is not affected by any status conditions, um, the Aridos really does not do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to end up relying on Spider Trap, and then, right. then you're just hoping on the luck of the game at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I I do oh, immediately counters with the space center. Yep, good stuff. Um, definitely want Poke Powers. Um, seeing as how insane Pidgeot is, and um, Battle Frontier locks that. So, oh, space center should be able to play that Stevens. Does that? Yep. <laughs> oh, is. Is Stevens everything? Is Stevens everything, or is it just the bench? Because then that means I drew an extra card. Oops. Oh, yeah, I, if if case, <laughs> I drew an extra card against you as well. Yeah. Um, I had to have triple read every card I played that game and still played cards wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um. Oh, we got the pigeon online. Ooh, there we go, and here we go. We have Pidgeot searching out one card, any one card, um, every turn. Which is an insane ability, or poke of power. Um, yeah. <laughs> see if he remembers to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, double rainbow energy makes it so that um, Nido Queen only needs one more attachment, but it does um, reduce the damage output by ten. Yes. Um, won't make a difference if he chooses to use the first attack. Um, doesn't do any base damage. It mm -hmm. just um, po poisons. Yes. Um, do believe the first attack on the Nido Queen is a grass attack also. Yes. So the double rainbow may be the only way to actually use that attack. Okay, gotcha. 
Um, gonna go get a red candy. Get a red candy. Okay. Um, oh. you red candies the or other. We may have to remind him he can only do that. It's once. only. Wait, 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 Nick. Um, once per turn. He, you can only quick search once ever per turn. Um, we're gonna stop him in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> we're gonna stop him for a little bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if Pidgeot you could use more than one a turn? I mean, I, I played through this format when it was fresh, and that was a big misconception early to begin with. Uh huh. So, constantly reminding people, like, hey man, you, you can only do one of those. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like, did, like you didn't have you didn't question yourself when you were searching two to three cards a turn. They're like, man, maybe is mm -hmm. this the way they wanted this to be played? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, with the way things are in in the format right now, I I think for something like Pidgeot to be viable, you would have to be able to use more than one per turn. Um, I mean, it's interesting. I think. Um, like there, there's a... there's been some content creators recently that ha um have even said that. Pidget is an effect that we could and should never see back in the game again. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a super powerful effect. I mean, I I feel like it's a very polarizing yeah. effect. Um, I I immediately regretted losing the the Luna Rock combo <laughs> as soon as I saw Pidgeys and Porygons. It is yeah. it is a lot to deal with. Yes, for sure. Uh, um. But right now, um, Matt is... He just retreated to the, the Nidoran? I thought for sure we'd see a queen after that. Right. I th oh, no. He, um, he searched out for two cards. Oh, um, okay. For two uh, evolution cards, I believe. Okay. So, so he got a Nido Queen and um, so if, something if else. So this is the route he's going, definitely looks like he's going to try to... Um, Use the Hound Door effectively. Keep his bench down lower. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go with... Ooh, a lot of energy. Yeah. With the Hall on Mentor again from Matt. Insane value. <laughs> or the Scientist, correct? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes. The Scientist. Correct, correct. Gonna bring up the other yep. hitter in. Spider Trapping. There we go. Um, probably a little interesting. This is probably just going to get rare candied right away. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like um, trying to stall here. I, I might have maybe um, gone for the Hound Hour. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going but... to assume... Well, he'll read it now, but yeah. I'm going to assume Matt does not entirely know what that does just yet. Yeah, um... um... Yeah, those uh, super scoop ups would have been pretty nice. It has hasn't even quick searched yet, and we have the rare candy oh, queen. Oh jeez, that's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> and and Matt is trainer locked immediately because Nick is only at four bench. Yep. So, oh man, it, it already looked like Matt was running low on the Flareons in a way to recycle that ability, that power. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm yeah, for sure. Definitely curious to see where this is gonna go. Yeah, definitely. It it looks like Nick um, managed to claw himself back into a good board position. Um, it turns out corner for the first three turns of the game is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and as as you can see there for the Nido Queen, um, for one grass, you can poison the defending Pokemon, and instead of putting one, you put two damage And it, it does put two. Forgot it put two. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good slower um, card. And um, if and when you need to, you can Power Lariat just for insane amounts of damage. And Power Lariat should take one hit knockout the majority of the game. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Nick quick searching for the other Nido Queen, so there's going to be two 120 HP Juggernauts on the field. This is looking rough for Matt. Um, this is exactly why I didn't want to play Flareidos. <laughs> the setup looks amazing, and then you end up playing these super grindy games. Mm, for sure. Um, cause, oh, um, no, no, um... He can't play stadiums. It's still a trainer card. 
Put four dollars on your brand. Yeah, because um, I think Houndoom blocks stadiums and item cards, if I remember correctly. Um, not entirely sure. Is it? Hey, Dan. Uh, the text on the Hound door does it stop the uh the stadium from coming down? Houndoom, yeah, Houndoom, yes. yeah. The Houndoom. Yeah. We can't play any trainer cards. Um. So except for supporters, so I think that that implies. Um, that the stadium is still a trainer card. Is is trainers also same card? Hmm. Man, they've changed the text on cards so much over the course of the game. Yeah, at this point, I think. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go a quick. Uh, shout out to Jimmy. Uh, hey, hey, Jimmy. Yeah. So the Houndoom, the the one that locks item oh, cards, like does that also um lock um stadium it? cards? Because oh, it says you can't play trainers except supporters. All right, so we're clearing it up. The The Houndoom definitely does stop stadium cards because it does not have the stadium subtext. It is it is a trainer card. Okay, got it. So we're going to back that up Thank just you. a little bit. Yep. I'm All right. sure Matt's still going to want to play that Flareon that he did. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you, The Diff, for, um, for confirming. Good stuff. And yeah, Pagey New Meta, I mean... Yeah, I mean, in a format where switch effects really were kind of sparse. Yeah, they um, they d you did not play a lot of them, and they were very good when you did. Mm -hmm. um, I I definitely remember there there were your small uh small group of people that would max out your switches and your warp points, and everybody thought they were crazy for it. <laughs> And well, then, and then you see decks now, and it's, I mean, it, it's like a different format. Yeah. It's way different formats, but like, maybe, maybe those people were onto something. <laughs> right. So, Matt still got the knockout on that Nido Queen w without playing the stadium card. Stadium would have just been nice to bump the space center. Mm-hmm. For sure. But um, the extra damage off the full flame um, adds to the burn damage uh, wasn't going to be super relevant. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, Needle Queen is, I think, weak to grass. Is it? Or is it weak to psychic? Um, I, I, I don't remember weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because I'm it, a it little surprised to see... It looks like grass if I had to use my supervision. Right. It, oh, it is grass. It's oh. backing us up mm -hmm. some more. <laughs> um, so here, actually, Flaridos is able to one-hit KO Nido Queens. Um, still going to need to status condition them, though. Yes, for sure. Um, so, and I mean, if if Nick can somehow stick Matt with a hand where he can't um, pick up Flareon, which he already has with a Houndoom, um, or or um, just half layer on in the first place. Yeah, it, I mean he's then, only he only has the one EV left to evolve into, and currently cannot play super scoop ups. Mm -hmm. um, now he can though, I think. Yes. So I'm not actually sure if putting down this Nidoran was the right play. Yeah. It, um, um, it's rough because if Matt just has the Flareon, this this queen just goes down right, right away, likely. I, yeah, for sure. I this. <clears throat> I mean, with with the uh, with a free retreater like Pidgeot, um, you can use that as a pivot. And then with the old rare candy rule, okay, may, maybe um, Nick doesn't have any rare candies left. Uh, if I remember correctly, he went through three, maybe. Yeah, the the the. Queendom deck doesn't need a whole lot. It, it, it can definitely play the game on the, the slower start mm -hmm. and just on the backbone of quick search uh, work its way back into the game. Right. So uh, Matt does not look like he has the greatest hand either. Okay. Um, <clears throat> plays the transceiver. Probably going to take that scientist again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not Matt. sure how many cards, maybe three or four cards off of this. Yeah. I mean... All right, going to play his hand down a little more. Yep. Scientist, draw. Going to draw five cards. Hits a super scoop up. Ooh, if this super scoop up is heads... 
Nick will be in a pretty rough spot. Oh, off the table. Oh, here we go. It's a heads. Wow. So we are going to see this Knight of Queen go down. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I suppose in hindsight, I, if you don't bench the Nidoran, this Queen just doesn't get knocked out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many Celios or um, Professor Elms Matt has played. Yeah, but... he, he could have easily just had an Elm to yeah. take that knockout, in <clears> which <throat> case you definitely wanted this Nidoran to, j to go right back into it. Right. And, oh, it looks like he has the rare candy in hand already. So, because with the old rare candy rule, um, what Nick could have done was just rare candy the Nidoran into um, Nido Queen. As soon as you that play same it, turn. yes. So... Um, I would have liked to have Nick at least force Matt to have the last flurry on, or a way to get the last. Yeah, on. I I likely would have made the same play. Um, <clears throat> what did Matt have for only five cards in hand? I believe at that time, mm -hmm. I probably would have taken that chance also. Yeah. Um, we are just playing casual games here, of so course, yes, <laughs> ma making sure that the games can go as long as they can, and r really kind. Really trying to find your way in and out of situations is, oh, yeah. I, I think, more or less what we're, we're doing here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, this this format is way slower than what we're used to. And especially if, um, like, you started playing in the past few years. Yeah, so. this, this is, I, I don't think that this is easy for anyone who's only started the game in the last few amount of years that can pick these up and truly understand how these decks function. Mm-hmm. Um, like you're just you're the 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 game is so fast you're you're attacking for these huge knockouts on the first and second turns of the game. Um, that was rarely the case in these formats, uh, with the exception of like your Lugias and mm -hmm. um, having type advantage on the defending Pokemon and stuff like that. Right. But, um, we're gonna see the Battle Frontier come down again, so Nick is not going to be able to use the Pidgeot ability. I'm going to yep. call it ability all day. <laughs> Honestly, after having almost a decade worth of abilities being Right, it has in, been in that play, long, hasn't it? it? It's been that long, almost. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm rounding up a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. Right, I will, still, I will still, in tournament games, as my opponent go to use abilities, try to fake them out with a power spray, and they don't even know what that card is. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh man, but yes, yes, the diff. Yes, we definitely had a switch from search base effects to draw base effects, and the search base effects that we had it all became items. Yes, um, because like you have stuff like Ultra Ball. Like, yeah, you have to discard, but I mean, that type of effect was on a supporter, and it was a yeah, really when, good supporter. When the game, the time, when but... the game more or less shifted to our supporters being our draw engine. Is is when I feel the game definitely changed. Mm -hmm. uh, you were you were almost forced to play an aggressive deck because using your supporter to draw additional cards wasn't going to help you set up a long term game plan. Mm -hmm. For so sure, it's that's when we started seeing not so much dunk decks, but decks that were attacking for. 80 to 120 damage on the first couple turns of the game. For sure. So, I mean... Uh, it's... He Celioed for the Electrode? Okay. okay. There's Celio for the Electrode. Um, so, so here's an um, interesting thing, uh, Jeremy. Uh, m maybe you can answer because you played back then. Um, was there any merit... Overrunning, you know, stuff like cast form over electro over the magneton. Um, I or I'm sure, I'm sure the players that that like that mined the format and really had the matchups to a T. I'm sure they had preferences for specific reasons, but I don't believe there was a big difference to playing the magneton over the electrode, or I believe it was like Voltorb over the magnemite. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, you, I, I believe it was really just you either wanted an uh, a basic energy that was searchable or an evolution energy that was searchable off of a Pokemon search effect. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. That's that's pretty busted though. Like I mean, being able to haul on 
call on mentor for for an energy essentially yes like <laughs> yeah that's good and double energies for for that matter <laughs> exactly um so here we had nick um Attacking. knock out the Ariados, um and then still poisoned oof um, but we are attacking with Flareon now. We are attacking with Flareon now. Um, so if if Nick actually just keeps this trade going, um, I mean, he'll come out on top. Yep. He you know, will a one for two. definitely have to remember that the Flareon is taking 30 less damage right now. Yes, um, for sure. The Flareon essentially having 140 HP is huge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Queen is definitely not knocking that out this turn. No, definitely not. I think I would probably like to see Toxic or something um, from yeah. Nick here. Yeah, maybe Toxic on a Pokemon that doesn't want to get Super Scoop up, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, because cause right here, um, Nick is trying to, or was that Matt is trying to, um, like, this is this is his threat. So if you force him to um, Super Scoop up a threat, um, I, th I think that that would be pretty good. But also, I mean... Super scooping this up is um and it actually doesn't do too much actually because he can just come in and kill KO with an Ariados, right? So Well the Ari well the spinner rack has the energy and the Ariados does not. <laughs> and Matt's hand looks like fire energy is the only attachment. I see. Uh two grass oh my god, his whole deck is grass energy. Oh man. <laughs> I, I think I saw a um a multi a um an Ariados in Matt's hand. Okay. So, um, if Matt can get a super scoop up, I, I think he will be very much in the lead. <laughs> well, it, it looks like Matt be, may be trying to hold that last EV for the Umbreon EX. Oh, yeah. For sure. Because um, Umbreon EX is pretty much like a Nine Tails Bright look. Or a, yes. um a uh, or Lux Charm or L Luxray G. Yes, um, everybody's Luxus, favorite right Luxray. Right. So it's pretty much a Lysander effect. But, um, um, the Nido Queen is gonna get knocked out. Yep. It was still affected by status conditions. Yeah. Uh, the two retreat cost on that may um you you're rarely going to switch that out of the active spot, um especially when it can just be attacking for huge numbers. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey man, maybe if uh, maybe if Nick's deck list had four switch, he wouldn't be in this position, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he I, majority of the time he is getting knocked out as soon as being affected by conditions. So switch not as relevant in the situ the current situation. Mm -hmm. um, we still have the battle frontier, so the pidgets aren't going to be able to use quick search. Sounds good. Um, Nick has lowered his bench, not necessarily by choice, <laughs> but Matt is item locked again as long as he. Well, Matt will likely not be item locked if this knockout hat. Well, there won't be a knockout hat. Yeah. Here. Oh, man. How bad did I do my math? Because the Wait, rainbow reduces 10. The rainbow reduces it by 10. So is that one, two, three, four? Oh, it does uh, six, eighty. Seven. Okay. Yep. So, oh man. Cards in hand is a lot. A lot of cards in hand. <laughs> there We're is probably a bunch. looking at a copycat or a scientist. <laughs> yep. If Matt can somehow, it, it looks like his last Flareon might have been prized. I think I didn't see it in his hand or his deck. Okay. Did, we've only seen the two Flareons all game. Yes. Okay. So, um, oh, I, I oh Nick Nick though um, has the same amount of Pokemon in play as Matt, so um, yes. Matt can still hit Super Scoop up. So if Matt can find his Super Scoop up and um, have it hit heads, I I do I honestly think that Matt might just win because. I think this is like the third or fourth Mito Queen that Nick has gone through. Yes. Um may I believe it's the third queen. Um he'll be able to put double rainbows if there one left I, I believe so if it's not in the prize cards. Mm -hmm. Um can attack with the Pidget, but is only going to be attacking for thirty. Yeah. Um 
can take a knockout on a Flareon possibly in that scenario, but we'll, we'll still only have one prize left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... Matt, Matt does have to take two knockouts from this situation, from this spot, though. There are no, e, there are no EXs mm-hmm. in the Queendom deck yeah, for, sure. for Matt to take two prizes off of. Yeah, so pretty much every <laughs> every match against Queendom is going to be a grind. Yeah, if if Nick could have if Nick could have knocked out the Flareon on the turn it was attacking, um, or any point in this game knock out a Flareon, uh, this I think this game is extremely different the way it has panned out. Yeah, for sure. And unfortunate for Nick that he flipped tails on the sleep. That is actually huge. Oh, oh, there's a but, warp energy but, though. Warp, warp energy lets him run to the bench. Oh man, he's going to be able to retreat this pigeon. Wow. And Matt is going to have no attackers in play. No attackers. Um, yeah, that's right. Flareon can't attack, but he had to retreat that energy. He had to use that energy to retreat. Oh man. And immediately going to get stomped by an admin. Yeah, I um, mean. So it it looks like Nick is going to turn this game back around and take these couple of knockouts yeah definitely this uh so i i suppose um i mean what two perfect cards multi-energy umbreon ex i guess um, the, <laughs> i mean the umbreon i believe also for a dark has like a 30 and a clutch attack also okay gotcha um again even if that was the direction he took would only take one prize off of that yes so does look like he'll play to that slight out. Yeah, I mean, I guess he just all he can do is just attach to Flareon pass, and here Nick is just able to take another knockout on this Eevee going down to one prize. I I actually like this a lot by Matt because um so it makes it so that um you know he's not vulnerable. Um, yes, but. I mean, as of now, this is uh, this is pretty rough. Like, what can Matt do? He can, like, hit for 30, and then just hope to top deck another energy and hit for whatever the second attack is. <laughs> I see I see the diff is uh, touching on our Magnemite Voltorb discussion. Well, like I said, um, there are definitely discussions and arguments for either or. Uh, Nick is going to take this game down. Yep. Matt just did not have an attacker. Yeah. But um, wow. there are definite reasons for having the Magnemite versus Voltorb. For sure. Um, in a majority of games, I don't think the differences are going to make a huge um, a huge difference in your games. But um, in those few scenarios where it can make a difference, it, it will likely make all the difference. Mm-hmm. For sure. So... We'll see. Are they going to play another one? Um, Playing another one? I, um, do we wanna, we probably wanna switch decks. Switch it up. So, yeah. Looks like we're going to switch it up, find some new decks to play. Yep, for sure. So, exciting game, though. Be right back. Yep.